the firing of a neuron, or for that matter, a muscle cell, or any cell that is responding to a nerve innervation, causes ion fluxes. Sodium enters a cell that leads to depolarization, that leads to the beginning of an action potential. Potassium leaves the cell, restoring the cell's membrane potential. And a cell can be excited several times like this, and each time it's excited, the resulting ion flows will cause sodium, which is at higher concentration outside the cell, to rush in. And to complete the action potential, potassium will then rush out, both events being mediated by these voltage-gated channels. But there's a problem. You can restore the resting potential, which will allow the cell to fire again. But at some point, you will have put so much sodium in the cell and lost so much potassium from the cell that the cell will no longer be able to, to fire properly. It no longer has the correct sodium-potassium balance. Restoring the sodium-potassium balance is the job of the sodium-potassium pump. The sodium-potassium pump is a well-studied example of active transport, and free energy is used to establish the gradient in which potassium then is again high inside the cell, low outside the cell, and sodium is once again low inside the cell and high outside the cell. We've seen an active transport system before. The mitochondrial proton pump is such an active transport system. It uses energy from energetically favorable electron transfers to concentrate protons outside the matrix in the intermembrane space or even in the cytoplasm since the outer membrane is leaky to protons, right? You remember that. The sodium potassium pump gets its free energy from ATP and it uses that ATP to reestablish those correct sodium and potassium gradients across cell membrane. So we start with ATP in the cell. The cell is off to the left. We have a sodium potassium pump protein in blue shown here. And we have sodium shown as purple triangles and potassium shown as brown spheres. So how does the pump work? Well, the first thing that happens is ATP is hydrolyzed to ADP, and the phosphate from the ATP binds to the sodium-potassium pump. Let's look at that again. Because when the phosphate is used to phosphorylate this protein, let's look at it again. Watch the change in shape. Binding a phosphate results in a conformational change in the sodium-potassium pump protein. And in that configuration, the protein is able to recognize sodium molecules and expel them to the outside. We can look at that again. There are some purple triangles going to bind to binding sites. Three of them actually bind, and three of them then are expelled. You'll notice that in the expulsion of the sodium ions, the pump has again changed conformation, and it actually has exposed some surfaces to the outside of the cell, which recognize not three, but two potassium ions. And in the process, the sodium-potassium pump changes conformation one more time and releases the potassium inside the cell. And we can look at that again. So here we have the potassium's binding, a very rapid change in configuration. And the potassium leaves the pump protein and is now inside the cell. And you'll also notice that the phosphate has come off. Part of changing conformation in this part of the illustration is that the phosphate is hydrolyzed off of the protein. To summarize, free energy, G, remember, from ATP hydrolysis is what's going to power this pump. The phosphate actually participates in the process by binding to the sodium-potassium pump protein, causing a conformational change in which the sodium can bind and then be expelled from the cell. And the phosphate then is hydrolyzed as the potassiums go into the cell. And again, cyclic conformational changes account for the binding and release of the different ions. So this process reestablishes the normal sodium and potassium concentrations in a resting cell. So a responsive cell has a resting potential and a resting sodium and potassium concentration, which is then affected when the cell has to respond to an innervation or other stimulus. The pump uh, engages in a three sodium for two potassium exchange. Two potassiums are brought into the cell for every three sodiums that are expelled from the cell, the process of reestablishing sodium-potassium balance. I remind you then that making gradients requires free energy, and gradients actually contain free energy that can be used to do things, as we saw in the case of the mitochondrion and in the case of the chloroplast as well.